Well, Shane, welcome back. Yeah, looking forward to uh, playing for the Stars again this year. It was great fun last year being in, uh, with a great group at the Melbourne Stars. We are um, disappointed we didn't make the final last year, so hopefully we can this year. I think the team we've got on paper is a fantastic team that we've all put together. Um, but now it's a matter of gelling that team together, building up the team spirit, getting our tactics right, batting orders and all those little things right, which we'll do over the next few months. And hopefully when we play our first game on December 7th, it'll be uh, ready to go. When you left the WACA last year in the big semi-final loss, did you think that was your last game of cricket? <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, you know, I, I suppose, you know, I wanted to be involved in the first year just to help Cricket Australia, to help out the younger players, help out the Melbourne Stars, help establish 2020. So it was from that point of view, as well as having some fun bowling again. And I suppose I did okay on the field. Um, looking forward to this year, even one step further, doing just as well, if not better, on the field, um, captaining a, a winning side uh, and gelling these guys together and help, help trying to impart my knowledge of 2020 a bit more uh, from a leadership point of view. So it's quite exciting for me and quite exciting for the stars and quite exciting for the group of all of us to have another crack at it uh, in this franchise cricket for the Big Bash in Australia. We've got a lot of international players too to expose them to the Australian crowds and the Australian grounds, which are different to what they've been playing on. Uh, so I think all in all, it's exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to it. You've achieved almost everything there is in cricket. What motivates you? I think just the love of the game. I'm passionate about the game of cricket. Um, I try and impart all of my knowledge onto spinners, to captains about tactics and all those types of things. I've enjoyed working in the commentary box around the world. Um, but the love of playing the game, as long as I still can, um, you know, I, I think I did pretty well last year. I didn't wake up every morning and go, oh my, oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? I was actually quite enjoying it. So I think while I still can, there'll be a day when I physically can't. I'm 43 this year. Um, so there'll come a day pretty soon where I can't. And that's obviously that'll be a shame and have to move on. But while I still can, and these opportunities arise, then and, uh, I try and take them. And this opportunity arose. And it's a privilege and an honour to captain the, the Melbourne Stars. And um, I'm looking forward to working with the group. Can you tell us about your star squad this year? Yeah, well, if you look, we've got two spots still available, so we don't, haven't got a full squad yet, but the people we have signed, I think it covers all the bases of both pace, spin, all-rounders, opening batsmen, dynamic. You know, they, they, we've just got to put the puzzle together now. You know, when you've got you know, something along the lines of Quiney, Hodge, Maxwell, uh, White, Hussey, uh, et cetera, Faulkner, et cetera, um, you know, Hastings, Mackay, Molinga, we've got a pretty good side, Luke Wright, they got the fastest hundred in the tournament, you know, in Australian domestic cricket. So we've got all the facets as a matter of now. As a, you know, it's hard to get a spot in the side, which is a good spot to be. There's going to be good players that are going to be left out. Um, so it's up now in that lead up that week or ten days before the first game to make sure that these guys are putting their hands up. They've got to put in form. They've got to perform in the practice matches. Um, yes, there's good players and all that, but we'll be picking form players. The people in form, the people that are doing well, will get a game. The others, if you're not in form and not doing well, you won't play. So it's going to be pretty strict. We're going to have a pretty uh, disciplined side. There's going to be some non-negotiables. It's about respect, earning your stripes. It's not about promoting players, I don't think, in the big bash here to play for Australia. I think all of this is an experience to play for Australia. I mean, we've got state cricket where Australia gets picked from, this is a big bash about winning. So if the form players, it's not about let's give them a game so they can push their thing for Australian cricket, I think it's about them performing. So Australia go, wow, he's doing really well in 2020, let's have a look at him. Um, so that's how I'm looking at it. It's about winning the competition. This is separate to everything. This is a, a big bash 2020 tournament that, it, that all sides want to win. It's not about anything else but having the best side on play, on pay, um, out in the field and performing. It's as simple as that. What's it like captaining a T20 game uh, as opposed to a 50-over game or a four-day game? And what are the challenges you face being a bowling captain? Uh, 2020 captain is basically chaotic. Uh, you have to be a couple of overs ahead of the game. You have to plan on who, what bowlers you want to bowl to what batsman. So you have to keep overs up your sleeve. But then if the game dictates that you're falling behind, you have to bring back certain bowlers. Um, you've got to understand what players don't play spin as well as fast bowling. Uh, you have to understand all that and juggle your bowlers because they've only got four. So it's quite difficult to do that. You've got to get the field placements right. Um, you've got to execute your plans. You can have all the plans in the world, but if the bowlers can't execute that, then it makes everyone look silly. And that's what happens in the, the, you know, the, the, the fast forward rock and roll cricket of 2020. That's what happens. People executing skills under pressure. Um, that's what it's about. And from a bowling captain point of view, I've found that 
sometimes it's when you're bowling and planning the next over, you even have to be a few overs ahead even more. You have to be so well planned and drilled. It's about set plays. It's about all of those types of things. And that's what we'll be trying to work out. The months leading up to the tournament, we're making sure they're all in place and everyone knows exactly what's going on. So we've got plan A, B and C. And then when things all go A well, we've got another plan Z as well. Which uh, batsmen in the Big Bash League offer the biggest challenge to you? And me as a bowler? Yeah. Um, oh, it, 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 there's so many dangerous players. I don't think there's one particular player that stands out. You go, oh, I don't want to bowl to him. Basically, all batsmen are trying to hit you for six every ball you bowl. So, And most of them can. So it's not easy. Us bowlers know that we're going to get smacked for sixes and fours, whether we're the best bowl in the world or not. You're going to get hit for six and four. So it bruises the ego a bit. The boundaries are bought in. They've got massive bats, all that sort of stuff. So us bowlers, if we can, like if we can keep our bowling under seven runs and over, take the odd wicket here or there that helps change the game, um, that's good because if five bowlers go for seven runs and over, that's 28 off your own bowling, there's five, it's, it's 140 you have to chase. You'd take 140 every time. So that's basically our bowling thing. We want to go for under seven runs and over. If we can do under seven runs and over, we back that if in the eight games that we play, if we can keep all sides bowling first, say for instance, if we're in that situation, if we can come to 140 or less, I'll back us to win most of those games.